Hey, if you've heard of Scrivener, but its complexity kind of intimidates you, then you're in luck. I'm going to be breaking down Scrivener into little digestible bites so you can maximize the software to write amazing stories. Hey friends, let's talk about Scrivener, specifically the metadata feature. And by talk, I mean I talk, and you leave comments down below. Ask me questions or tell me about your favorite Scrivener features. So yay, metadata, I love metadata. I know that metadata, that word, kind of has this scary connotation to it, like, ooh, that you know, when you're setting up a website and it's asking you for all this metadata for stuff and you're like, I don't know what that means and I'm just gonna ignore it. But metadata is so functional and it's going to make your Scrivener experience so much better. So let's learn about custom metadata. So the custom metadata or the metadata just on its own is contained in the inspector pane, which is this over here. If you don't have this and you're freaking out, where is it? It's just click on this little blue icon up here and there you go. It comes in. So get your inspector pane up and then go to the middle of this little tag looking thing. That's your metadata over here. We've got our synopses and notes our bookmarks, metadata is in the middle, snapshots are over here, and then this very last one, comments and footnotes. Metadata, yay, I love metadata. We'll start from the top and we will go down the line. The general metadata is when you created it and when you last modified it. Also included under the general metadata is the include in compile toggle. And checking this on or off is, it determines whether you're going to export it in a compile or not. This is if you wrote a scene or something and you don't want it, you can, it's not, you don't have to go through and delete it. You can just click that off, but you don't lose it. It just doesn't get compiled. It's still there in your manuscript within Scrivener itself. So if you decide to add it back later, it just click a -roo and off you go. This is also where you can toggle the section types, just like you can toggle them here. You can toggle them here. Now we come down to the really fun stuff and I'm actually going to skip custom metadata for just a minute and we are going to talk about keywords. Keywords are great. Being a responsible author and assigning keywords to your new chapters or scenes or whatever your text documents are, including you know your, your folders, you can still include keywords to adhere to the folders themselves. If everything in here has to do with a specific keyword, you can apply that to the folder. Within this thing itself, you can change around and screw around with the keywords. Just like everywhere else in Scrivener, adding things, you click the plus sign, subtracting things, you click the subtraction sign. But for now, I want to pull down to the little cogwheel. You hit that down button and my thing went that way. This says add keyword. This is show project keywords. I will try to fix that anyway. So show project keywords is what we are going to select. Let me scoop this up here. So I've already added in some just to kind of shorten up this video. We will kind of go over a little bit of what I did. All right. So this will be blank when you first open it up in your template. And to add things, you come down here and this is the add a new keyword and it says as a sibling, which is important. So we've got the sibling right here and the child right here. And this is just based on where they nest. So if I had a sibling, it doesn't nest under any of these. It is its own separate thing. So fish POV and then we'll say, um, we'll say setting right here. So now I can add a child. And if I add a child, we see that it nests underneath it right here. So setting, we can say reef. And then if I leave it selected on reef and I hit the child again, it will nest underneath reef. So we can say, all right, great barrier reef. But if I have it here and I click sibling, it will make it on the same level. So we'll say fish store. There you go. Under your settings, you've got these two. And then under reef, you've got it nested a little bit more. Up here as well for fish, we have clownfish and shark that are on the same level, but then under the shark level, there's the great white and the bonnet head. And under point of view, Mr. Bubbles and little sharky are our point of view characters. Over here, all these colors, these just are automatically generated whenever I click that plus sign. If you want to change these, double click and the color wheel pops up, drag it around wherever you want and then just exit out and it will stay there. Awesome. Down here at the bottom, 
we've got this little cogwheel. So apply keywords to selected documents and or remove them. So you can apply or remove. And this is just if you've got certain documents selected over here, you can apply these keywords to all of them kind of in one fell swoop. So let's click over here and we can click and we can click um, scene and then I'm going to shift click down the line. So I have all of these selected. Come back over here and they're still selected. And let's go. My fridge is making noise. Shut up, fridge. Let's go up here and select fish. Click down, apply keywords to selected documents. As you can see, fish, 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 fish showed up in all of them. This is a good way to, if you want to add a lot of your keywords to, or you want to add some keywords to a lot of files at once, then this is how you do it. And then you can do the same over here, remove them, and boom, they're gone. This one, the search over here is we are going to have its very own video that we're going to cover because the search function in Scrivener is amazing, but you can search for anything that has these keywords assigned to it, which I don't have right now. So let's do this. Let's, oops, all right. Things out of that. Those are selected, come in here, apply keywords, and now we're going to search for fish. And here are these scenes. So I hit search and they all come up. Now, if I search for clownfish, Nothing's going to come up because I don't have anything selected. So I'm going to exit out of this now and I'm going to click back up here into books so I can, well, click up here. All right. So that I can kind of see more. So over here, keywords, and I'm going to do them as color chips just to kind of show you the difference. Let's select this scene up here. When I hit this cogwheel, add keyword. So the show project keywords will bring up this. That's where that comes in. So if I Click the down cog, add keyword, and you can see my fish POV and settings that were all set up on the same level. Fish inside it has clownfish and shark, and then right bonnet head, POV, Mr. Bubbles, and little sharky, and then the setting is kind of the same up as fish. So let's set this as the POV is Mr. Bubbles. So we see it come up here, but does not say Mr. Bubbles. It is just a greenish, yellowish square. But that's the color that Mr. Bubbles has been assigned. So if I double click on that, double click on that, you can change it to red and we see it change all over the place. I don't remember what it was. It's something like that. Okay. To add, so I can hit the plus sign and then I'm going to make, so S is we've got setting and shark in here and it brings up setting first, alphabetical, S, H, and shark. Now it's important to know that Scrivener, these are not case sensitive. You can have fish with a capital F, and then let's add down here, fish that's all in lowercase. So I type that in, I hit return, and it automatically adds in fish dash one, because it will not allow you to have duplicates of the same keywords. So it will automatically add fish dash one because it doesn't care about capitalization or anything like that. So if you're, putting in keywords and you start noticing that the like fish dash one pops up. Oh, I already had fish. Understand that it won't allow you to have duplicates based on capitalization or case. Alrighty. So we'll close that. So we've got our keyword colors over here. Mr. Bubbles is green and shark is this grayish color. Now I don't remember what those mean. I can't be expected to remember all of this crazy stuff. So click that arrow and click off of as color chips. And then when you come back in here, it will have them typed out. So the keywords are Mr. Bubbles and Shark, which are these colors. If you if you have a color coordination kind of a system set up, then that's that's um, handy for you. But you can also have them just typed out. We've talked about keywords, which are really great to have at the beginning of the chapters that I have. You know, because if you're in a chapter, you have your keywords down here. So if I know that this chapter is going to be in Mr. Bubbles' pers perspective, click that plus sign and start typing Mr. Bubbles. And there he is, pops up. Okay, hit enter. And I also know that it's going to be in the fish store. So I can add that in. So I've got my setting and my POV character, which means that later if I want to find all of the chapters or scenes that are set in the fish store, instead of having to kind of comb through and look for them all, I can just you go up here and click on this and then type in fish store. And there it is. It brings up anything that I have selected that I have tagged with the keyword fish store, which is scene A, scene A. So 
we can see. So it just makes it really handy for you to be able to find things fast, especially when you're editing or trying to kind of reorganize stuff. It just makes it really easy. So we are going to get into the custom metadata now. So custom metadata, yay, we love custom metadata. What the heck is custom metadata? Now in my outliner video, I showed you that if you click on this menu all the way down at the bottom, it says custom columns. But then over here, set up custom metadata, both of them lead to the same place, which is the custom metadata tab within this pop-out. And the default will be nothing, nothing is in here. And with, I believe it was between Scrivener 2 and Scrivener 3, which is I use Scrivener 3, that's the newest update. This type down here, there are now four of them, which I can't show you until I create one. So let's create something that says, uh, let's create a deadline. So now this is not grayed out anymore. Click this drop down menu. So I can have text, a checkbox, a list, or a date. So for deadline, I wanna choose date. So this will pop up. You can set the data, the format, however you want. Also, if you want to ignore custom time or ignore time zones, you can do that too. So the deadline is handy. Let's add that. Okay. If you need to write this whole thing on a deadline and let's say I want to write this scene by tomorrow and I want to write this scene by Sunday and I want to write this scene by next Wednesday or something like that. So with this one, we select it here. We bring this up and this is the date I am filming this video on. And so this is tomorrow, so we set up for that. We'll do it 3.40 p.m., sure, why not? All right, so there it is, it pops up here. To be able to see that up here, again, we click on this little button. So this is called deadline, and we click on this button, and down here at the bottom, deadline has been added. So we click that on, and now we can see that the deadline column has been added in, and this scene, the deadline is tomorrow. And this is good for, if you're using Scrivener for like, writing a big paper for school or something and putting the due dates in or um, you know my ultimate due date is November 15th so I want to write one section per week and so you kind of can indicate that out from there going back in here to the custom metadata so these we've got text checkbox and list let's add another thing and we will call it CP read now let's make it a checkbox. You can select it to be ticked by default or not. And I'm gonna leave it because I wanna know, have I had a CP read this particular scene yet? And it's just a checkbox down here. Did I have a CP read it? I did. Great, you can check it off and so on down the line. You can make this, I mean, you don't have to make it CP read, obviously you can make it whatever you want. That's just a handy thing that I thought of that you could use these custom checkboxes for it, but you can use it for whatever you want and that's how you set it up. Clicking here again. So let's do a list this time and we're gonna say POV, make it a list and down here. So the item title, um, we are gonna say characters. Dang it, I always do that. If you hit enter, it'll come out here and do this nonsense so let's go back in here and pov is selected okay so list items click that plus sign and it's mr bubbles it's one character and then plus sign little sharky those are my two characters hit okay now we have this kind of scroll wheel over here we click the scroll wheel okay this has mr bubbles in it and then if you enable it in here you can click the scroll wheel in here and change it this way so it's kind of like these status plot point, etc. This is how you make your own custom plot point or labels, status, section types, etc. is by doing it that. And last but not least, the text metadata. Now I use this one for, let's say, timeline. It's gonna be text, align left, you can wrap it if you want, use colored text, whatever. I'm just gonna leave it regular. So timeline, let's say you're writing a story set outside of a time period that would be colored by covered by this calendar. You know, this only is the regular Gregorian calendar for modern times. If I'm writing something set far in the future or something far in the past or a fantasy world that doesn't use the Gregorian calendar, etc., and so on, 
You can use this timeline to keep track of what's happening when. Or it could be as simple as saying Thursday. This thing happened on Thursday. It's over here. Turn it on. And here it is Thursday. So there you go. That's how you can add your custom columns in and track your own custom metadata. And everyone is different. Whatever is important to your particular story and your particular storytelling style is what you should use. If you don't want to use these keywords or a deadline or the check mark for CP or POV, like don't do it. This is just how I have found that it kind of works for me. So I think that's it, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I hope you learned something new and amazing about the metadata in Scrivener, and I hope you're ex as excited to try it out as I was to make this video. I'm such a nerd, it's fine. If you like this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Wash your hands, Black Lives Matter. Have a nice day.